Okay, welcome back to the Farm Life Show. Blake, yeah. I'm calling this a special edition okay. of the Farm Life Show, and I think we'll call it like uh, Real Talk. Real Talk. No, Real Farm Talk. Real Farm Talk. Yeah. Real Farm Talk. Yep. Okay. And this is where we'll just hit some different topics. Uh, like, did you know? Uh-uh. So today's topic is a did you know? Did you know? So I'll just Tell lead me. off with this. Did you know that uh, according to Scientific American, uh, okay. Over 21 million pounds of medically important antibiotics are used in our food system via fed to livestock every year here in the U.S. Now, this was an article. Do actually, I want to know that? Well, you know, it's just it's, that's what we call it, real farm talk. Um, and we're not trying to scare anyone here, yep. but that's the reality uh, reported as of, I think it's 2017. So it's a little bit older data. I looked yep. up some other data. It was still around that okay. number, which um, in the key term I talked about there, Blake, was medically important drugs and antibiotics because one of the side effects that we're having in the, this whole article is about in Scientific American. By the way, this this article actually featured Seven Sons as a possible solution to this problem. Um, so it's, yep. it's kind of cool. You can actually Google Scientific American Seven Sons and this article will come up. Uh, but they were highlighting in here, the whole point of the article was how dangerous this is getting because now as humans, we're getting you know uh, resistance yep. to uh, drugs and antibiotics uh, that maybe we would need at some point in, in a dire situation. Um, I meant to hold this up earlier. This is actually a bottle of vitamin E, uh, but I thought it would be a good effect for yep. the farm life Represents. show. Yeah, I can kind of move it out of the frame though. But anyways, uh, so Blake, let's talk about this. Um, you know, from a all things being equal from a consumer yep. perspective, yep. I would think that most consumers – all things being equal, would prefer not to have antibiotics in the food system and ingesting that in their food. Now, yeah. and to, in all fairness, like we used to, I mean, our background is a conventional confinement farm. We had is, a CAFO yeah. here 23 years, 24 years ago. Yep. I mean, that's how our farm started. Yep. And, you know, being fair, I don't think there's a single farmer out there that's proud of the 21 million pounds of antibiotics being injected into our food system via livestock. So, no. but, but, but the system we participated in, we, we about had to. That, that's what I'm going to say. Yeah. So if, if consumers don't want it, farmers aren't proud of it, why do we do it? Yeah. So, I mean, that's a big loaded question. But it is. I mean, but what, in, in simple terms, it's, it's because we have the animals in the wrong Place. So we have to use them because the, yeah. the animals are being raised in confinement. I mean, they're yep. they're out of their element completely. Yep. Um, I mean, you know, I, I like the term agriculture and food production has changed more in the last 50 years than the last 5,000 years. And one of those ways it's changed is taking animals out of, out of their natural yep. environment, confining them to tight, small spaces. I mean, how do you think humans would survive if they're all crammed into bathroom-like uh, yeah. living quarters. Living quarters, yeah. And at least uh, we would have toilets. Yeah. Uh, they just have all their manure and feces yep. goes right below their feet, yep. stored in these massive manure pits. So you've got uh, lots of ammonia coming up uh, in the air. It's not, it's just, it's not a good environment at all. And the reality is, Blake, the food system has so focused on the term, you know, or, or just this philosophy and idea of fatter, faster, bigger, cheaper. Yep. And that's what we discovered when we tried to start making changes at our own farm. Well, we we're making investments in higher quality food. Yeah. And, our, and our cost was going up when we realized, you know, the commodity food system rewards quantity over quality yeah. every time. Yeah, it does. Uh, and I wanted to get to, to the end of this episode more about the solutions. How do we move forward? But let's talk about, uh, you know, some of the uh, – how are antibiotics and, and drugs even administered? What are some of the reasons animals uh, need them? Yeah. And it, it, a lot of it is just based around the vir- environment that they're in. So, you know, pigs are going to, you know, they're going to be administered something for a good, uh, good, um, respiratory system because, you know, they're, they're in the confined area. So, mm-hmm. so tight that they're passing stuff back and forth all the time. So when one pig gets sick, yeah, thousands of pigs get sick. Yes. So, and so they're, they're constantly being fed this medicated feed to medicate against, against that happening. Yeah. So there's, there's several viruses that they're constantly going to be medicating against. 
Um, and then, you know, and then when an animal does get sick, they're obviously going to treat them, um, with that as well. So, um, which is a higher, higher dose of it. Um, so it's just, it's just a constant because of that environment, because we've taken an, an animal that's lived outside, a pig live, would live in the woods. If you turn a pig out, it's just going to naturally live in the woods, come out yep. and eat, eat through the, the grass and stuff and live in the woods and the shade. Eat nuts and yeah. all kinds of stuff. And they're going to, uh, develop immunities, uh, immunities and yeah. natural immune systems. You know, not to mention, Blake, these animals that are uh, put in confinement. And obviously, the reason they're in confinement, Blake, is because uh, that allows uh, farmers to produce mass quantities yep. of cheap livestock and food. Yep. Because the reality is the meat packers that buy in the meat packing industry is so consolidated. Yep, I know in the is. beef industry, like the top four uh, beef packers control 80% of the market. Yep. So that's a... That's more than a monopoly there. Yeah. So they dictate the prices yep. to the farmers, and the farmers are left with, okay, how do we do this? And that's over the last 50 years. The CAFO systems have developed. and Our farm wouldn't survive if we sold on the commodity market. We could not raise yeah, we would the go, animal outside the way they're supposed to be raised and sold in the commodity market. We would go broke. Yes. It's just the, the economics do not allow for that. Yep. And, of course, there's a whole bunch of finger pointing so that yeah. the farmers will point to the packers. They're, they don't pay us to do anything else. We have to do this in order to just to barely survive. And then meat packers are like, well, customers, consumers, you they know, will only pay food. so much. Yeah. And, they, you know, the meat packers want to sell more yep. food. So the cheaper it is, the more they can sell. And if you look at how much Americans spend on uh, food as a, like a, a percentage of disposable income per capita, yep. if you look at the last 50 years, like that has just dramatically uh, went down. I mean, food has never, ever been so cheap. We don't think about it. I mean, there's a lot of inflation right now. Yeah. And you think, my food's really getting expensive. It ain't nothing no, compared it to uh, what it represented yeah. as a cost of living 40, yeah. 50 years ago. Yeah. There's an interesting stat in a documentary called Catching Fire. It was actually on the uh, on the, the medical community, okay. um, healthcare or sick care uh, industry. <laughs> sick care. And... Uh, it was a really interesting um, data that posed the question, what if uh, food cost had risen at the same rate that health care costs have risen since 1940? What would food cost today? And if you had that, if you applied that same inflationary rate that has happened to how much people spend on health care, sick care, sick care. Uh -huh. if that same inflationary rate that uh, had grown at the same pace for food cost – what would a dozen eggs cost today? A dozen eggs cost today? I, well, I think I, I'm trying to go by memory. I think it was like $32 yeah. for a dozen of eggs. It was $30 or $40. Wasn't for a, a gallon of milk like $48 or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. like a, a, a bundle of oranges, like $130. Yeah. Food, we don't realize at Perspective Check, yeah. food is so cheap now. But guess what? Food has gotten super cheap. Sick care and health care has skyrocketed. just skyrocketed. Yep. So uh, circumstantial evidence there. Yep. But at Seven Sons, we believe that nutrients and health of our society starts in the soil. Yep. It don't matter you know, what certification is on the label in the grocery store. Uh, if, you don't, if you're not taking care of your soil and you don't know what's going on in there, then yeah. you're not going to be able to produce nutrient-dense food. Yeah. Period. All that to say, why are farmers using drugs and bikes? Why are, we raise, why are farmers raising in confinement? It's to, to, to feed that cheap food system. Yep. It's a vicious cycle. And it again, is. everyone kind of wants to point at, at everybody. But, yep. And then we could point about policies, too. Yeah. Oh, yes. Because like as a consumer, it's like, why does the government even allow for this? I mean, yeah. the FDA, USDA allows for the 21 million pounds yeah. of medically important yeah. drugs and antibiotics. And a lot of the crazy thing is a lot of other countries don't allow for these yeah. same drugs and antibiotics. So but like another reason that drugs and antibiotics are used is not just for keeping the animals alive during their short miserable lives in confinement, but it's also helping them grow faster. It is. Tell me about a, uh, a drug or a feed additive called paline why is that used it just it makes them lean keeps a keeps the fat down keeps them growing faster so you think about your bacon in the store you get you know it's just it's, it's nice and lean not a lot of fat on it uh compared far, to our bacon compared, that you get yeah, yeah. our, our bacon is gonna have a lot more fat on because we're not feeding paline and yep. we're letting the pigs naturally carry that body fat that has all the nutrients in them that is healthy for them and then healthy for us at the same time. Yeah, I think the idea there is if you can feed the animals a drug that doesn't allow them to put on fat, you know, fat is considered yep. in the food industry a not waste. a real desirable. Yep. It takes a lot of energy to put on fat. So if they can feed the animals something so they put on more lean muscle mass, they'll grow they'll faster, grow, they'll grow faster yep. up, pro more profitable, cheaper food. Uh, yep. But for example, paleo, Blake, that is... 
that's not even legal in like 180 yeah. countries. But it is here in America. But here in the U.S., yep. right? It is. Um, so anyways, what's the solution? And, you know, it's kind of how do we end this episode? What's the solution? And um, I really, in my mind, I don't know what your thoughts are, Blake. If you had like a high level, okay, here's what we do. Does it like, does the government step in? Uh, you, do, you know, what happens? Is it is it up to farmers to change? Is it up to consumers yeah. to change it? What's the solution here? And it, it, It's complicated, but from, from a high level, I think it really comes down to um, farmers being transparent willing to produce something different and um, and then tell their story about, hey, this is what we are doing. And then we wouldn't be here, Blaine, if it wasn't for the customers that cared. Yeah. Yep. So yep. Uh, allowing your farm to be, um, you know, visible so yeah. that uh, other, other consumers that do care and are passionate about putting healthy food in their body can, can get access to and actually vote with their food dollar. If we I, wait for the government to fix it, It'll yeah. never get fixed. Yeah, I think the, there's a big debate. Is it is the solution top down, like from yeah. the government to industry yeah. um, to farmers? Or is it bottom up? Or is it bottom up? Yep. And I, I get so excited and feel so much hope about the bottom up solution. Yes. It can start with farmers yep. challenging themselves, yep. um, really taking on that responsibility. I mean, yeah. Blake, one of, the, one of the things that we remind ourselves, and this was actually taught to us by another farmer mentor. Yep. Uh, one of our mentors always said, it was actually Gerald Fry when he was visiting our farm once. If you're a farmer listening, that name might be familiar. But he said, you know, whatever you do as a farmer, never forget that the moment that you raise a food product and you sell it to a customer, he said the moment that the customer gives you gives you value, money in exchange yep. for what you raise for them, he said at the moment that transaction takes place, you as a farmer, me as a farmer, yep. we become personally responsible for the health and well-being of that customer. And if, like, that's a belief system. It if, is. if more farmers at a grassroots level just level took on that uh, that responsibility, yep. that sacred responsibility, owned it, and being wanted a food to own producer, it. Yeah. there are so many different things we can change. It, and and this change isn't going to happen overnight, but we can yep. start making with small changes. It, but just that single but, belief, yes. Blake. If more farmers adopted that, I, I think it would change our entire society from the ground up. It would. And our and environmental, environmental health, consumer health. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just, no, I'm, I agree with you. And I'm just saying for people that feel like policy needs to be a part of it, policy will follow from the bottom up. Yeah. When it starts at the bottom and goes up, policy will, it'll, they'll adopt it. They'll change. But just, you just can't, it, it's hard for policy to start at the top and, and be that effective. Well, industry is so powerful. Yeah. Um, and industry really controls policy yep. if, if we're, uh, you know, if, if we're honest. Yeah. Uh, it's a revolving door. If it you is. watch Food, Inc., it oh, highlights yeah. that. <laughs> Make your blood boil. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, I, I agree. I think so much change can happen. And it already is happening yes. at the farm level. And it really takes a farmer to say, I'm opting out of this crazy system. And I'm going to try to go find and connect with consumers that are as passionate yep. about nutrient-dense food, regenerating soils, changing uh, the future of society. I mean, like one of our goals that we talk about is, you know, what's the purpose of Seven Sons? We want to empty entire hospital wings. Yeah. You know? That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? Yeah. They have to lease them out for business Get rentals people healthier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, but, but that's the idea, yeah. you know, is that we can affect a lot of change, locking arms with consumers. Yep. And, and then there's a lot of debate out there. Well, what about consumers that would struggle to afford a higher quality, slower type food system? And uh, it's so easy to jump to that question, Blake. Um, but I think we can, I think as this uh, grows and evolves, we um, can become one more efficient as yes. Uh, as regenerative farmers, yep. I mean, with with scale comes economics. So, so give this regenerative food industry, uh, you know, we've let we've, it mature. It's still it mature. baby. I mean, the the uh, confinement uh, industrial food systems had fifty years to kind of grow yeah. and refine and scale. Regenerative will need, will need some time. Yeah. So for now, those that can support it, support it, and yep. before you know it, twenty thirty years, those that couldn't s support it now we'll be able to then. And then think about the whole equation of, again, we talked about how much healthcare costs have gone yeah. up. When you start reverting those dollars so we're not spending as much as healthcare, there's enough money in the whole food system and the whole yeah. healthcare, uh, sick care, food cost system yeah. to turn this thing around. It just starts with those that can. So farmers that can, make changes. Yep. Consumers that can, let's lead the way and, yep. and things will follow along. 
So Blaine, one, one of the questions that always comes up when we're talking about this is, um, this is all, this is all great and it feels good. And yeah, we don't want 21 million pounds of <laughs> antibiotics fed yep. to pigs and we don't want to consume that, yep. but Blaine, how, how are we going to feed the world? Ah, oh, man. And that's another yeah. big question that comes up, um, yeah. all the time. Well, I, I, I mean, there's so many different ways to answer that, yeah. but, um, the reality is, is that we're not going to be able to feed the world by, uh, uh, basically destroying our soils. Yes. Our soils, not only is that where the nutrients is that needs to get into the food. Yep. Um, uh, but if we're, you know, there's a lot of stats out there. David Montgomery wrote a book called dirt. Um, yep talks about the amount of soil erosion that's happening every year where lands are cultivated with monocrops. Like there is absolutely no way a monocropping industrial chemical based, uh, uh, food production system that degrades the land year after year. There's absolutely no chance that system will feed the world. Feed the world. Uh, long term, long term. Yeah. Uh, uh, contrast that to a system that's self regenerating, mm-hmm. um, uh, like a pasture-based system, Blake, at Seven Sons, our soil and land is getting healthier and healthier, more productive. Our, our farm has never been more productive Agreed. than what it is today. Yep. Our, the water and holding capacity of our soils is three times. So, so that's like we're getting three times the amount of rain. Yep. Uh, what controls how much food can be grown in different parts of the world? What's the amount of rain you're going to get? Well, yeah. there's a lot you can do to influence how much rain you actually absorb into your soil. So all that to say... Uh, th- again, this system needs time for adoption. Uh, economy is a, s- a scale. When I say yep. system, I mean regenerative agriculture. Yep. Uh, but there is a bright future there, and I would say it's the only solution to feed the world. To feed the world. But you know what? It's I, one community at a time, though. Exactly. I it's not. I don't know if it's Seven Sons' responsibility to feed the world. Yep. I it, think it's Seven Sons' responsibility to educate and to share. Um, and we want to share what's working on our farm and yeah. Okay. So our farm is, you know, our water holding capacity is three to four times what it was when we we're farming conventionally. Yep. How do we do that? Let's share, let's talk about it. that way. Other communities, uh, in the United States and across the world can adopt these principles and, and feed their local communities. And you talk about the food dollar staying local then. Talk about the, con- yeah. What kind of, uh, money is kept in a local economy when there's that that food system dollar stays in that local yeah. economy. What did Henry Kissinger say? So he talks about the fact, because we think about, oh, how do we feed the world? That's America's responsibility, right? Well, <laughs> well, one of the reasons America feels so responsible is because we've been selling so much cheap food overseas, like, um, that the local farmers can't compete with that. Yeah. Um, so that, they so what's just, that do that they communities? Just stopped. Yeah, that, that devastates uh, rural communities here in the U.S. and abroad. Um and so, but, but the whole point with mentioning Henry Kissinger uh, was really responsible for so much of the modern ag policy that we now have. And his mantra was this, those that control oil control nations, those that control the uh, food system controls the people, which yeah. is where the real control is. And, yep. and Henry Kissinger, he was, I think his big thing was the defense department. Yep. He was literally looking at uh, controlling the food system as as a weapon, as, as a weapon. leverage, uh, as a global uh, player in the world for the United yep. States. So, and he was the one that influenced so much of the uh, the ag policy that we have around supporting this industrial farming system, uh, you know, bigger, cheaper, fatter, faster, mm-hmm. feed the world system. And it was that policy of how do we use food as a part of our defense. Um, you know, control. So it, it's interesting. I know we're yep. getting a little tangent there, but I pick know. it up. It's uh, Seeds of Deception. Seeds of Deception, yep. Um, Henry Kissinger. Yeah, he, he's featured in that featured book. It, yep. um, so it's it's pretty cool stuff. But anyways, we've had a nice little chat here, Blake. Yeah, I we think have. think we've talked about the problem. Yeah. And we've talked about the potential, uh, potential solution and really how he, empowering uh, customers that are listening, um, how much you can influence by locking arms with yep. farms like Seven Sons. Uh, really all over the world. Absolutely. So. All right, Blake, thanks for uh, sitting down and having a chat. Uh, yeah, a thank real, you. Uh, Blake and Blaine with Seven Sons yep. checking out with Real Farm Talk. We'll be back with another episode.